I guess while we're waiting on people to join, I'll tell y'all what happened with my grandma. My stepdad came through to visit uh, this past weekend and uh, stopped in to see my grandma. And in an attempt to be polite, half jokingly offered her special brownies as like a, a, a not a housewarming present, but like just like a courtesy gift for being in somebody's presence. Um, and I think mostly because she thought it would be rude to turn it down, my grandma accepted, which was very surprising. And I made sure that she knew exactly what he meant by special brownies. They kept talking in code. And I was like, no, 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 no. I need... There's no cops here. I need you to know, express that you understand what's being offered to you. And she was like, I grew up in the 60s and 70s. I know what special brownies are. What else would they be? And in hindsight, she never actually did say that she knew what it was. But the 60s and 70s thing made me seem like it was, like, uh, legit. Um, and then later in the evening, I expressed to my stepdad that I was confused because she was, like, very anti-special ingredients, like, last year, for the last couple of years, for the last long time. I was apparently, like, back in the day, back, back in the day, it didn't affect her, so she was never interested. She thought it was stupid. Uh, which led us to, like, warning her, these are very strong. You gone? Be careful with how much you eat. You should just have, like, a very little bit if you have any. And she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what I'm doing. I'm an old lady. And congratulations on getting a Squirtle, Johnny. So she messages me the next day at work about, uh, about them. And like, I'm medium busy at work. So I'm probably not paying enough attention to it. But she was like, do you think I shouldn't take them? Do you think that I should just give them to one of my boys? Uh, how much should I take? And I was like, I can't tell you what to do. I think it would be absolutely fine if you gave it to your son and didn't do it. If you do do it, you should take very little of it. And like most people would use it as a sleep aid. So like just take a little very little bit and just like lay down and relax and chill out so she did the opposite of all that she ate a piece of the brownie that was about this big which is at least twice how much i would suggest and she didn't think it was doing anything so she went and she exercised. And she went and she used the bathroom. And then she went back and she got another, she's hankering for some chocolate. It tasted bad to her, but it was the only chocolate that she had. So she got it off another little pee, about this big, which is about now four times the amount of brownie that she probably should have had, you know? And she's feeling a little bit woozy and off after that for a little bit. But she likes chocolate, y'all. She was going to get a little bit more chocolate. She goes back to the brown and she breaks off a piece of this big. So now we're up to six times the amount of brownie that she probably should have had. And she was walking through her house holding onto the walls. And since from her past experience, special ingredients don't infect, affect her, she thought that she was having a stroke or a heart attack. She's completely panicking, which is dipping the mental attitude of the situation way down. It's going to affect the trip that she's on because she's done fueled up to go to orbit 
got enough to go to the moon on her way to Mars. And she walks back into the room that she exercises in and she gets focused on her carpet that's back there. It's a rug. It's got like a uh, all-centered geometrical pattern with various like different squares and rectangles of different colors. And she gets solely focused on it would feel really good to lay right there in the floor right now. She's probably right. Uh, you know? Laying in the floor is awesome sometimes. So she lays in the floor. Uh, she then cannot get up out of the floor, which led people who came by later to think that she had fallen and couldn't get up. But in actuality, she was just like, looks comfy down there and very gingerly got into the floor. No bruises, no bumps. And she started focusing on how bad her stomach felt. And I think it was because, you know, you get too drunk, you throw up, it, a lot of it gets out of your system, and it, it helps sober you up. It don't work that way with special ingredient brownies. Once you are starting to feel it, it's not in your digestives anymore. It's The chemicals have been absorbed by your body. body. There's no amount of Persian that's going to make that happen. But she laid in the floor for I don't know how long probably an hour and she began to wonder and plan out what color she would need to throw up in what order to solve her rug like a Sudoku puzzle because she believed that if she got all the colors right as she was blowing throwing up that it would have like the card explosion effect from free cell like all it all starts blowing up chains of cards until they're all gone and like maybe she thought it would clean it but I got a message uh, a little while after this from my uncle letting me know that he checked on her she's super high I should go check on her after work and I'm feeling guilty I feel bad this is like 25, 30% my fault, I feel like. And so I go and I get there after work and she's asleep on the couch. I announce my presence so she doesn't get scared. I sit on the floor beside of the couch where she's laying. Uh, talk to her a little bit. She feels bad. She feels fucking awful. Uh, I've been I've visited her in the hospital after she's had tr cancer treatments. She's as bad as that. She's having trouble with her words. She's having trouble keeping her eyes open. She's fucking zonked out, and she's just having a bad time. And she sets up, and then she starts trying. She says she needs to th th throw up, and she starts like gagging. She's ah. Yeah, and it was painful to watch and then the next thing I know is she's over her bucket and it's almost dry and she slips her middle finger down her throat and she says it doesn't work for me so I have to do it this way and that's when I realized that she wasn't having to throw up or she was mostly nauseous because she had been trying to force herself to throw up and I can't get her to stop doing it I finally I uh, convinced her to lay back down and try to like not focus on that. I got her some ginger ale, got her some water and she's forcing it all back out. And I was like, just lay down and try to sleep because the only thing that's going to happen that'll help this right now is the passage of time. I've been there. I've done it. It, it sucks. It's not a good time, but time will pass and it'll get better. And then I decide that the best thing I can do is first off, it's so hot in her house. It's like 78 degrees in the house and I'm wearing like my full work clothes. I'm sweating. So I like, if I'm going to stay here for longer, I need to go get uh, some more comfortable clothes. I'm going to need to go to the grocery store and get something uh, to eat. And then I'll come back here and I'll watch some Doctor Who. Because she one, she knows Doctor Who like the back of her hand. 
I, she won't have to pay attention to it. Two, it'll relax her and it's a little bit trippy and it'll keep her mind off of how she feels and more on something more positive. So I go, um, before I go, when she's uh, trying to force herself to throw up in the bucket earlier, she like basically scream cried. I don't, why the fuck would anybody make themselves feel like this on purpose? And I was like, most people, you know, go a little bit lighter and they don't feel like this. But we'll talk about that when you're not feeling like this. So anyway, I go to the store, I get ice cream, chocolates, something to eat. Um, and I got some like uh, garlic knots. Uh, so when her stomach did feel better, there'd be something kind of like blandish for her to eat. Um, I went and I changed clothes. I came back and I ate. When I got back, uh, she had to use the bathroom. She set up and she's able to walk again, which was definitely progress. She started moving around and, uh, she got into the bathroom. I waited outside, made sure she'd get back. And then she sat for a little while. I started Doctor Who. She starts to kind of like come around. Uh, she gets up. She cooks her dinner. Even though I had already like offered food of other types that she wouldn't have to prepare. She's like, nah, I'm cooking. It might have been, I think she might have had the munchies. But I'm kind of like finishing my food, keeping an eye on her, doing like little things that she needs and uh, watching the Doctor Who Christmas specials from this past year, uh, trying to get caught up, you know? And uh, she comes back, she eats, she eats her whole burger, and then she goes and she takes her plate back into the kitchen. When she comes back in, she leans in the doorway and she says, I get it. I was like, what? She's like, I get it, I understand. What are you, what are you talking about? I understand why people take this stuff. I feel like, you know, in a different set of circumstances, this would be really nice. <laughs> and that's when she told me about the rug Sudoku and how badly she was tripping balls in the floor. And then we just watched Doctor Who's psychedelic Christmas special on the couch together and she's just having a fucking great time. And then she was high all day the next day. And, uh... I think she's she's pretty much back to normal now. 